Can I push it? Everybody ain't going to get this, but everybody you read in the Bible who heard God speak, watch this, they didn't have a Bible. Um, Abraham had nothing that told him to just live by faith and not by sight. Hagar didn't have a letter from Paul saying all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Job didn't have the book of Job. So Zena, this is what I want to know. How did they discern the will of God without the word of God? They did not have the benefit of 66 books like we do, but yet they discerned God was speaking to them. That's a real word because every now and then I've had the Bible in my hand and still not known what God wanted me to do. take a trip to Africa anybody ready to go anybody ready to go somebody shout out yes so I want to teach you this you're gonna say these words see a hamba kukanyen kwenkos try it again see a hamba kukanyen kwenkos we're gonna teach it to you come on put your hands together like that Goes like this. Sia ha, baku kanyen kwen kos. 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 Sia ha. See ya, humble, 
wonderful Zulu folk song all the way from South Africa. This is what it means. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. Where are my soldiers? We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. Come on, march with us. Say, we are marching. We are marching. Yeah. We are marching in the light of God. All the soldiers, we are marching. We are marching. Yeah. We are marching in the light of God. You got to come on, Trinity. We are marching.
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do me a favor, high five your neighbor, say, we've come this far only by faith. Come on, high five your other neighbor, say, I'm going to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on together. Let's sing family. Oh, we've come.
church to me. This is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know about you, but I've come to rejoice and be made glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is good. Let me say that again. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures. But all generations. Amen, amen. Our scripture reading is found in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. And it reads, Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will and may he work with us, work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ to whom be glory and glory forever and ever amen, amen. it is prayer time this morning i am sure that some of us have brought some names with us to the sanctuary verse, uh, here in person and virtually. But we also have some names that we would like to pray for this morning. Let us pray for Deborah Madden and Stephanie Robinson as they adjust to the transition of their father, Lee Robinson. Let us pray for Roland Stone, and of the sister of Jacqueline Stone. Let us pray for Brandon Wright and Michelle Wright the transition of their grandmother and mother, Margaret Wright. Let us also be in prayer for Sylvia Rice for the transition of her mother, Curly Rice. Also, let us pray for Rhonda Stewart and Dahlia Stewart Simmons as they adjust to the transition of their mother and grandmother, Linda Stewart. And finally, let us pray for Ken and Charlene Washington as they deal with the transition of their father, Welton Washington. Those names that you have on your heart this morning, would you please utter those at this time? Let us pray. God, you are so merciful and so kind. 
God, you blow our mind each and every day. By who you are and what you do for us, God, you are amazing. So God, in your amazingness, God, we have some names of those family members who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. God, be with them right now. God, they need you. Not only do they need you, we need you right now, oh God. God, we've come into your worship hour with burdens and trials and tribulations, but God, we know that if we lay them at your feet, you will work everything out. God, you've proven yourself over and over and over and over and over again. So God, we worship you in spirit and in truth. We cast our cares on you right now, oh God. God, you're so merciful and you, you care for us each and every day of our lives. So God, have your way. Move like only you can move in this service and we'll be careful to give your name the glory, the honor in which it is due. And we seal this prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ. And let us all together say amen. amen. Let us remain standing to sing our hymn of rejoicing. Lift every voice and sing.
and pass the peace one with another. episode real quick. I, I'm coming. I'll be right there. Okay? All right. <sighs> Today, Sandy Speaks will focus on... Somebody come look at this! Somebody come look at this! Somebody come look at this! I can't breathe in these chains! Get these chains off me! Nothing I'm doing warrants the way you're treating me. Sleep, just minding my business. Just mind my business. Just an innocent act. Man, come on, what is this? You treat me like an animal, not like a human being. You killed my husband, snatched my babies, and brought me here for a shilling? I can't whistle. I can't speak. I can't look. I can't think. Just no, sir, and take it. You hear me, boy? No mistake. I'm down. I promise you, I'm not a threat. No need for the sticks. I'm complying. I said yes. I was just walking home simply mind my business, but breathing on your street made me look suspicious? I didn't do it. I wasn't there. Do you care? Can you hear me? I'm innocent, and yet you stole my youth away from me. It ain't right. You threatening me over a turn signal? What's wrong with you? Why you gotta throw me down like that? I don't want to die. So how did I commit suicide? I was asleep, pregnant, wasn't even thinking about you. I wasn't even up when you began to shoot. And how was it my fault that that man was wanted? He shot, I did it, but you ain't even haunted. I heard her take a knee, but this is ridiculous. I have no weapon, I am no threat, and I can't breathe. This is ludicrous, but everybody's going to see. Everybody's going to see how you beat me down. And put a knee on my neck while I was trying to cop a plea. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I, I can't, can't breathe. breathe. I can't breathe. I, I can't, can't breathe. breathe. Get, Get off me. me. And for that, you you're going to say my name.
morning, Alfred Street. To our guests who gather with us on today, on this Sunday, we continue to tell the story of the survival and the success of African Americans in this land. I want to thank our drama ministry for the reenactment that reminds us that we are still yet free in this land. Oftentimes, whenever I turn on the news and I hear and see of more violence and death within our communities, I'm reminded of all that our ancestors, our foremothers and our forefathers endured and fought for, the horrible conditions of slavery and race in which they lived, and yet they believed deep within their hearts that God did not make them to live that way. They knew that the promises of God were not restricted to color, and that when Jesus came and said that I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, they just believed that even if that abundant life was not going to be realized in their lifetime, that we would be the inheritors of the sacrifices they made for us. So today as we come in this moment of remembrance and reverence not only of the sacrifice of Christ, we remember the sacrifice of those who've come before us and the obligation we have to continue to fight that battle, to advocate for justice and equality, and to walk in the abundant life that Christ died for us to have. We remember in the breaking of bread and sharing of cup. If you are a born again believer and confess in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we share this moment with you. If you did not receive the elements of communion, would you just wave a hand in the air and we have deacons who will gladly serve you today both in this space and overflow. And to those watching online, we encourage you to take hold of the bread and the cup that you will use in this moment to remember and to reverence with us the sacrifices made before we got here. still being served. Can we sing that softly? Jesus, keep me near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the of the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ. Crucified, dead, buried, resurrected, ascended, and now interceding on our behalf, and one day to the glory of God returning. In remembrance of sacrifice, let us break bread and eat together. And the cup is that which reminds us of the blood shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins and the redemption of our souls. Jesus, keep me near the cross. 
Let us drink together. Pray with me, family. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to remember. To remember the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross and even the sacrifices of those who laid down their lives for our blessing and our benefit. Lord, may we never stray far from the cross. And may we never become so drunk with the wine of the world that we forget thee. Thank you for doing for us what we never could have done for ourselves. Saving us from eternal damnation and granting us abundant life in this world and in our heaven to come. We are redeemed, and for that we give you thanks. And the redeemed of the Lord said amen. amen. Beloved, grace and peace be unto you from God who loves us as both mother and father. And Jesus Christ who always and alone is our resurrected, our risen, our reigning, and our returning redeemer. I greet you all on this day with a little extra shout and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the words of Jesus, it is finished. Praise be to God. This is day 21, the finish line of our journey of prayer and fasting. If you know God's done something in your life, if you know that you're grateful, just help me give God the glory for 21 days. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. I, I'm ending my fast at 7 o'clock. Where's Deacon Byron? Deacon Byron came to me yesterday. He said, Pastor, I'm be at the steakhouse with my wife at 7. Please make the prayer short. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you've been seeking God, would you raise your hand? If your hand's raised and someone was raised next to you, lean over and tell them, what's your first meal going to be? What, what you... <laughs> Somebody say Popeyes in Jesus' name. Family, congratulations. Um, indeed, God has been doing great things through this journey. We look forward to collecting those testimonies and sharing with you in various ways the amazing things that God has done through our journey of prayer and fasting. Today, as we gather and recognize the presence of God bring us to this moment, we also recognize the presence of God in our guests who are with us. I want to begin by recognizing our delegate, uh, Sister Dell McClure is here with us and Adele is the first woman of color, the first person of color to represent us from Arlington in our Virginia uh, House of Commons. Sister Adele, would you stand? We want to welcome her today, a groundbreaking sister. Welcome. We have some other guests as I was walking around. We have friends and family from Detroit and Ypsilanti and Richmond. If you're a guest of our church family, would you wave a hand in the air that we may thank God for you on today? Help me thank God for those hands that are raised. Welcome. Hey, if you're watching online and you're outside of the Washington, D.C. area, please type in the chat where you're watching from. that We may thank God for your presence as you worship with us online today. I know we've got a couple birthdays in the house. I know Stefan's celebrating his birthday. Amen. Congratulations. If you're celebrating a recent birthday, would you stand as we thank God for our birthdays on today? Sister Donna, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, you all shouting for seek to be over for a whole nother reason. Amen. Congratulations and happy birthday. We also expect, uh, recognize the presence of God in love. If there are any couples, any spouses celebrating another year of marital bliss, would you please stand and remain standing? Any anniversaries in Alpha Street on today? Amen. As you're standing, welcome. Please remain standing. 
You know how we like to do it at Alpha Street. We celebrate. Would you shout out how many? What anniversary is this? Congratulations on your fourth anniversary. And blessings to God for you. Amen. How we thank the Lord our God for the way in which the Lord has been good to us. Listen, family, there's just a few quick things I want to lift up that we may prepare our hearts to give virtually and then be blessed in song. We're blessed today to have Trinity in the choir, and we are looking forward to how God will touch us through their song. I want to remind you that Ash Wednesday is coming up this Wednesday. The 14th is not only Valentine's Day, it is Ash Wednesday. I want to know you ought to get your ashes in church. Amen. We will be distributing ashes in church on this upcoming Wednesday. Listen, you've got three opportunities. From 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., we'll be distributing ashes to go. So maybe on your way to work, you can stop by out front of the church. Our ministerial team will be there to anoint with ashes as well as here in the altar for those who want to come inside. At 12 noon, we'll do the same thing for the lunchtime hour. You can drive by and receive your ashes or come inside and receive them. And then at 6 p.m., at the end of the day, we just gather inside for our ashes. And so we invite you to join in with us on this Ash Wednesday to receive our ashes either at 6 in the morning, at noon, or at 6 in the evening. We'll let you know the last Sunday of the month, Sunday, February 25th, is our HBCU Sunday. Every February, we honor and celebrate one of our HBCUs by inviting their president to come and share with us. This year, we welcome Dr. Kevin James, who is the president of Morris Brown College, will be here with us on the 25th of February. We're encouraging you to wear both the paraphernalia of your alma mater or your Greek organization as we recognize the great legacy and life of our historically black colleges and universities. Dr. James will be here at 8 o'clock. At 11 o'clock, our senior youth will be presenting their black history program. We take very seriously raising a generation of young men and women who know the truth of their story, who know that slavery did happen and it did not benefit black people. And so they will be sharing a walk of history with us. I wanna encourage you to be with us both in person and online as we honor and recognize the amazing gift of those young people. And then finally, we give thanks to God for some amazing things that happened on last night. On last night, we gathered in this place, and by the grace of God, uh, and I can still feel it in my back, we baptized 45 new believers into the family of faith. Amen. And if that wasn't enough to shout about, then we gave the right hand of fellowship yesterday, virtually and in person, to 153 new members of the Alfred Street Baptist Church. Lean over and tell your neighbor, but it gets better. Last night we paused right before service began. Because we had a medical emergency. Sister Michelle Ross went into full cardiac arrest and flatlined in the bathroom. We gathered and prayed. The medical teams came. And I'm here today to tell you that she's in stable condition at Inova. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Don't tell me what prayer and fasting cannot achieve and accomplish. Someone once criticized Alfred Street and said, y'all don't talk in tongues so you can't be Holy Ghost filled. When the dead are revived in the house of the Lord, don't you tell me where the Holy Spirit is not alive and active. Hallelujah and praise be to God. 
Went to visit her on last night. And the doctor literally said this. The church saved her life. That he said, I, I, I don't know what y'all are doing over there, but I need to come. Because you're saving souls and saving lives. I want to thank God for the responses of our security team, our, our security, our worship experiences, our deacons. Now, I want to take time to recognize uh, Deacon Dr. Allison Hilliard, who was on the site, performed CPR, and literally saved her life. Allison. Thank you. I am so thankful to God to be part of this amazing church family. And thank you, Alfred Street, for being who God called and created us to be. I, I pray that there's no hesitation or reservation in your heart about sowing and giving to the life of the church to help us continue to bear witness, to train, to prepare so that even a doctor in a hospital would say, I need to come see what y'all are doing over there. To be part of a place where 153 people said, I want to be part of this family. Where 45 folk gave their life to Jesus Christ and were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise be to life is in this place. And we thank the Lord our God. So as you give of your heart as you pray and ask the Lord what to do. You know all the ways that we give electronically because we don't raise an official offering during worship. And the great news is, is that we've not struggled because of that. Every time I tell the pastors we don't raise an offering, they look in disbelief and incredulity. Like I can't, I can't understand how that happens because when a people love the Lord and, and they know what's happening with the money they give and they see the fruit of it, not in new cars in the garage, but in life in the place, in the hungry being fed. There's no hesitation, there's no reservation to trust God in our giving. So thank you. Thank you for allowing us to remove that from worship and trust that you'll do the right thing in the right time. God, thank you because you've done more than enough to show us that this tree is fruitful. You've done more than enough to remind us that this soil is fertile. And, oh, God, that you're moving through this place. I thank you, Lord, for all those who serve and you've equipped to help us not only make glorious your name in worship and in song, but also in saving lives. Now, Lord, we give that we might continue that good work to leave a legacy to those who come after us. As always, I pray that you grant wisdom to the leadership of this church family, that we might be good and accountable stewards of all the blessings you've entrusted to our care. Thank you, O oh God, for the witness of your presence. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen.
my mouth to the Lord, and I won't turn back. I will go, I shall go, to see what the end's going to be. I open my mouth to the Lord, and I won't turn back. I will go, I shall go, I will go, I shall go, I will go, I shall go, to see what the end's going to be.
One of the things that never ceases to amaze me is the creativity that is inherent in our DNA. And how our ancestors in times when they were bereft of any resource were able to create things that the world came to learn to admire. Our food became delicacy. Our faith was given by slave masters and we decided to do something else with it. I want you to think for a moment of what these spirituals share with us by people who sang them in times that they didn't drive to church in Mercedes. Imagine what it means to stand and sing before I be a slave. I'd be buried in my grave that I would rather die than to live like this. I thank God for that survivor instinct that's within us. And God, we thank you that we're the inheritors of a great legacy. God, remind us that we have to still hold on because the battle is not yet over. Now speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. In the name of Jesus, who is our Christ, we do pray. Amen. Amen. We're coming to the end of Seek today, as well as the end of the series that has guided us through this time. For those who've been with us, you know that we have, for the last two Sundays, been engaged in a sermonic series of study to help us overcome what is arguably one of the greatest struggles that all of us will endure in life. And that is learning how to discern the will of God. How to know what God wants of each and every one of us, not just universally, but specifically and individually, what is God's will for your life? As we gather in this last moment of this series, I'm going to invite you to share with me a reading from the New Testament book of the Acts of the Apostles. That fifth book of the New Testament, which is authored by the same writer of the Gospel of Luke. The book of Acts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. If you would journey with me to the 16th chapter and listen for the word of the God beginning in verse number 6. It is our custom to ask those who are physically able to stand with us as we reverence the reading 
of God's Word from Acts chapter 16, beginning in number 6. And this morning I'm going to read out of the Common English Bible for clarity's sake. Acts chapter 16, beginning in verse number 6. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the regions of Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit kept them from speaking the word in the province of Asia. When they approached the province of Mycenae, they tried to enter the province of Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not let them. Passing by Messia, they went down to Troas instead. A vision of a man from Macedonia came to Paul during the night. He stood urging Paul, come over to Macedonia and help us. Immediately after he saw the vision, we prepared to leave for the province of Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thy will be done. I think it's safe to say that all of us have had moments when we were searching for clarity and certainty about God's will. Had moments when we were more than a little confused about which road God wanted us to take. Moments when we had a difficult decision in front of us with some life-altering consequences in the balance. And all we wanted to do was make certain we got it right. To make certain that my choice aligned itself with God's will. Because you have found out what I've experienced. And that is that the greatest joy in life you will ever experience is when your life is aligned with God's will. When you are walking in the will of God, there is a peace that surpasses all understanding. When your decisions align with what God desires for you, you will find life at its best. When you're living in the will of God. We began this journey in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29. And it's there that we uncovered five fundamental truths about the will of God that I want to repeat and reiterate. God has a will for every area of your life. There's nothing in your life, Adele, that is too small, too trivial, too insignificant for God not to have a plan attached to it. If it involves you, God has a will for it. But secondly, God's will can only be discerned with desire. God says you'll find it if you search for it. You got to want it. You have to hunger for it. You have to desire it. And the greatest way to discern the will of God is to learn to pray a little prayer that goes like this. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. When you are open to the will of God, you can discern the will of God. But number three, only God can reveal God's will for your life. God uses other people not for revelation, but confirmation. And because of Jesus Christ, you are not dependent on anything or anyone to know God's will for you. You can go to God yourself and know the will of God for yourself and by yourself. And remember, beloved, the will of God is not always the easiest option. God's will is not about what God just wants you to do. It's also about who God wants you to be. And the reason God doesn't will easy is because easy don't change you. Easy doesn't grow you. Easy doesn't make you come to church. But here's the good news that no matter how far you've strayed from the perfect will of God, God always has a way back. No matter how disobedient you've been, no matter how prodigal your life has become, no matter how much you've strayed and how long you've been there, God always has a way back 
God never cancels his will for your life. Those are five fundamental truths about the word of God. But there and we're still left with a critical question that must be answered before this series can be over. How do I know the will of God? Pastor, I hear what you're saying. But what does the voice of God really sound like? What does the hand of God look like when it's guiding me? How do I know when God is pointing me in one direction or another? Marcia, what signs should I be looking for when I am listening for God to speak? Can I push this? I need you to put your minds on. There are 219 places in the Bible where we read the phrase, and the Lord said to such and such. 219 times there. Kim Randall, there are 92 times when the Bible says, and the word of God came to such and such. If your math is mathing, there are more than 300 places in scripture where God spoke and somebody heard and discerned. The 300 places where God said something and who God was speaking to heard God speak and knew what God was telling them to do. Now, here's the question, Otis. What does that really look like? When the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came to someone, how? When the Bible says God told someone to do something, Mel, how did they know it was God? When Abraham is sitting with his father, Terah, and the Lord tells him to leave and go somewhere, and I'll tell you when you get there, what does that sound like? When Hagar's in the wilderness and God shows up, and tells her everything with Ishmael is going to be all right. How did God speak to her? When Jonah is sitting there minding his business and the word of the Lord came to Jonah and said, get yourself to Nineveh. What did the word of God sound like? How did Jonah know God was talking to him? When the apostles are arguing about circumcision and the Bible says, and they discern what God's answer was, how did they get together and know what God wanted them to do? Beloved, what does the voice of God sound like? Did, did God open up the heavens and begin talking with a loud voice? Is that what it means when the Bible says, and God said, that the heavens opened and they heard a voice? Because, Sharice, if that's what it is, why come God don't do that for me? I would have a much better resume of being a Christian if when I didn't know what to do, the heavens opened. And I heard a voice, Howard. I would have made fewer mistakes in life if that's how God spoke. Is that what happened? Did they hear a loud voice or was there something else? C can I push it? Everybody ain't gonna get this, but... Everybody you read in the Bible who heard God speak, watch this, they didn't have a Bible. Um, Abraham had nothing that told him to just live by faith and not by sight. 
Hagar didn't have a letter from Paul saying all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Job didn't have the book of Job. So Zena, this is what I want to know. How did they discern the will of God without the word of God? They did not have the benefit of 66 books like we do, but yet they discerned God was speaking to them. That's a real word because every now and then I've had the Bible in my hand and still not known what God wanted me to do. When I was praying about coming to this church back in 2006, I went to my concordance, and there's no Alfred Street anywhere in the Bible. There's no chapter or verse that could tell me this is where God wanted me to be. How do you know when God is speaking? And if it's a loud voice from heaven, I've got a problem because if you come to me as your pastor and you tell me that you're hearing voices in your car, I'm going to set your appointment up with Reverend Morgan and the counseling team because we are suspects of folk that hear voices. What does the voice of God sound like? How does God reveal God's will? Pastor, I understand all the truths. Only God can tell me about my will, and the will ain't easy, and, and I don't need nobody else to know God's will. But what does it really sound like? What does it look like? As we wrestle with that question, I want to invite you into Acts chapter 16. In Acts chapter 16, the apostle Paul is on his second missionary journey throughout the Roman Empire to preach the good news of Jesus to the Gentiles. It happened somewhere between 49 and 51 AD. And because you're a Bible reader and you've read Acts, you know that this second missionary journey began with Paul being hooked up with his best friend, Barnabas. But in chapter 15... Paul and Barnabas had an irreconcilable difference about a brother named John Mark. John, who had been on their first journey, had quit on them and said, this is too much. Barnabas wanted to give him another chance. Paul said no, and Paul and Barnabas argued so much that they decided, now may the Lord watch. Between me and thee, while we're absent one from another. Barnabas takes John Mark and goes to Cyprus. Paul is now partnered with Silas and goes to Derby and Lystra. And in Lystra, they recruit a young brother named Timothy. Preach the Bible, Howard John. And once Paul, Silas, and Timothy are together, watch this. Their itinerary was to go into Asia Minor. Donna's been to seminary. She'll tell you Asia Minor is modern-day Turkey. Paul, Silas, and Timothy had made up in their minds, we're going to Turkey. But what we read in verse 6 through 10 is that they changed their itinerary and surrender their plan because they discerned it wasn't God's will to go to Turkey. It was God's will to to go to Macedonia. Watch what happens in these few verses. Verse number six says, we wanted to go to Asia, but the Holy Spirit kept us from it. What does that look like? The Holy Spirit keeping you from something. Verse number seven says, and we wanted to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus wouldn't allow us. What do you mean the spirit of Jesus wouldn't allow you? What does that look like? 
And then in verse 10, they says, and we went to Macedonia because we were convinced that God told us to go to Macedonia. How would you know God told you to go to Macedonia? What does it mean to be kept from doing something by the Holy Spirit? What does it mean to not be allowed to do something by the Spirit of Jesus? And how do you reach a place where you are so certain that you know without a shadow of a doubt what God wants you to do? That's where I want to live in my life. I, I want that kind of certainty. I want to know that I know that I know what God's calling me to do. How did they get there? Well, well there, there's some clues Allow me to allow uh, lay down two, two, two opening comments before we scratch the surface and share some clues about how God reveals God's self. The first opening comment I have to make is that I've got to make an unsafe assumption. Before I give you some answers, I've got to make an unsafe assumption. I've got to assume that you want to know God's will. That may not be safe. I've got to assume that you're searching for God's will. And that may be unsafe. I've got to take for granted that you're praying every day, staying close to God. I have to assume that you fast every now and then to turn down the other noise in your life. I've got to assume that you open your Bible on more than Sunday to read the word of God so you know what God sounds like. I've got to assume that you want to know God's will. Second open comment I got to make is that whatever we uncover in these verses, I am in no way suggesting that it is exhaustive of all the ways God speaks. No way, shape, or form am I saying that this is the only way God can speak. But there's some clues to how Paul, Silas, and Timothy discern God's will that will help us in learning to discern God's will for us. Can we get into it now? Right. Here's what the Bible says. Watch this. I love preaching Bible. Bible says we wanted to go in Asia Minor, but the Holy Spirit kept us from it. Paul, what do you mean the Holy Spirit kept you from it? How did you know God did not will what you wanted? They wanted Asia Minor. God didn't will it. How did they know what they wanted was not what God willed? Somebody says, that's a good question. That's a good question. How do I know when what I want ain't what he wills? Come on, come on. Um, did a little homework. There's a scholar who maps out the journeys of Paul and maps them down to the month in which he was traveling. And this scholar argued that when Paul, Silas, and Timothy were trying to leave Lystra and go into Asia Minor, it was the season of storms. The winter storms were coming, and even though they wanted to sail to Turkey, the season in which they were trying to go, the winds were contrary, blowing in another direction. So even though they wanted to go that way, there were winds that were pushing in another direction. And because of that, there would not have been many ships sailing in that direction because sailors knew it was too dangerous to go against the wind. So when Paul, Silas, and Timothy wanted to go, not only was the wind pushing in another direction, but there were no ships sailing that way. And any ship sailing that way, the cost would have been so high based on supply and demand that Paul, Silas, and Timothy could not afford it. How did they know God didn't want them to go to Asia because the wind was pushing in another direction. Because there were no options of ships sailing where they wanted to go. And 
they didn't have enough money to convince someone to go in the opposite direction. So watch this. So when Paul, Silas, and Timothy saw that the wind was pushing in another direction and found out that there were no options of ships sailing in that direction and knew that they could not afford the direction they wanted to go in, they came to the conclusion that based on the fact the wind was pushing in another direction and there was no option to go where we wanted to go and it was out of our financial reach, God must be talking. Uh, because they found out what I want to share with you is that God can direct you into God's will, watch this, by making it too difficult for you to go in another direction. <laughs> yeah, God, here's how God talks. God knows how to increase difficulty and shut down possibility to point you to his preferred will. Let me say that again, because somebody ought to witness an amen. God knows how to increase difficulty and shut down possibility to redirect you to God's will. Wish I had a Bible reader. Um, Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, here's what it says. In Revelation chapter 3, God says this, I am he who holds the keys. And watch what I can do. I can open a door. Nobody can close. No, no, you shot it too early. And I can shut a door that nobody can open. I don't know who I came to preach to today. God knows how to close doors. God knows how to shut down options. God knows how to make it an uphill climb. God knows how to put it outside of your financial reach. God knows how to make it make no sense. God knows how to remove every option. God knows how to close doors in your life. And when you are praying and seeking and searching for God's will, if you move in the wrong direction, God is able to shut doors. Now, this ain't for everybody because some of y'all ain't lived long enough. But on behalf of some of us who are on our way to seasoned saints, I'll meet y'all at Wednesday Bible study. I'm on my way. Allow me to testify and tell you about the ministry of closed doors. Let me tell you about the beauty of being blocked. Let me tell you about the blessing of being brokenhearted. Let me tell you about the joy of being rejected. Let me tell you about the shout of God closing doors to point you to something better that God has in store. I wish I had a witness in here who can thank God for some closed doors. Um, back in 1997, I was just graduating from seminary. Zena and I were at school together. And in 1997, we graduated from seminary, top of our class. Let the record show a black sister and a black brother were at the top of the class at Boston University School of Theology. Top, 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 top. And, and, and I went back to Chicago because the home church I was raised in had a vacancy for pastor. I graduated the top of my class. My last name is Wesley, and I'm going back to Chicago to Lilydale Progressive Missionary Baptist Church. 
10706 South Michigan on the south side of Chicago. Because they didn't have a pastor. They were taking applications. I applied and went back to my home church, having graduated at the top of my class with last name Wesley. I was raised in this church. I was preaching to my Sunday school teachers. Got my choir director happy. I preached the best sermon I could preach in my life. Sweated all my shirt out. <laughs> there was a sister in the church who made a recommendation when I finished that we ought to elect this young man to be the pastor of the Little Dell Progressive Missionary Baptist Church because I graduated at the top of my class. I went back home with a last name Wesley to a church I was raised in because I knew this is where God wanted me to be. What a beautiful story. The one we raised is now coming back. Before they made the vote, a deacon whose name I can't call he stood up in front of the whole church and this is what he said. He said, we cannot take a vote because this man cannot handle 600 members. And I was brokenhearted. How dare you reject me? My last name is Wesley. I graduated at the top of my class. I was raised in this church, and he told me that I couldn't pastor a church of 600 members. And so yesterday, when we gave the right hand of fellowship to 153 new members, taking our number over 12,000. I look back and I thank God that God shut the door on where I wanted to go so he could point me where he willed me to be. Now, I don't know who I'm preaching to on a Sunday morning, but if God is closing doors, baby girl, don't you get depressed. You put your hands together and know that God is directing you to something better. Thank God for shut doors. Uh, we wanted to go to Asia, but all the doors kept closing. Watch what he says in verse 7. And we wanted to go to Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus didn't allow us. What does that mean? I, I get that God directs by closed doors. But what does it mean that the spirit of Jesus wouldn't allow us? What does that look like? Well, because I do a little homework before I get up here, I had to look up the word for not allow. This will get you this time, Dr. Garrett. The, the word for not allow is E-A-O. Everyone say E-A-O. E-A-O. It's E-A-O. You know what it literally means? It means to leave alone. It means to walk away. It means to give up. It means to ignore. Watch this. To not be allowed by something means that that something wouldn't leave us alone. It, it kept aggravating us. It kept, kept annoying us. It kept irritating us. So watch what Paul says. We wanted to go to Bithynia, but we couldn't because the spirit wouldn't leave us alone. God, can I tell y'all something? God not only directs us with open doors, God directs us with some EIO. God will put you in a season where God just won't leave you alone. Uh, God knows how to harass you. 
God knows how to irritate you. God knows how to say, I ain't going nowhere. God knows how to get on your last good nerve. God will allow you. God, God will wake you up every morning to go through the same thing the day you went through yesterday. And the same thing you went through the day before. Ain't nothing changed. So God can say to you, do you hear me now? <laughs> God will AIO you. God, God, God will take you through the same experience over and over again. You move to a new city, same thing. Get in a new relationship, same thing. Go to a different church, same thing. Deal with different friends, same thing. Only to say, okay, God, I, I hear you. You know what God will do? God, and it, watch, watch your hands wave because someone's going to be telling God will wake you up at the same time every morning. Before the sun rises and not let you go back to sleep just to agitate and irritate you. God knows how to hunt you down. Is there anybody here can be honest? Have you ever run from God only to find out God ran after you? Have you ever tried to break up with God and God said, I'm going with you? Have you ever told God no and God irritated you until you said yes? God knows how to irritate you. You know what that irritation is? It's what Elijah said in 1 Kings 19 was the still, small voice of God. That still, small voice never goes away. You, you know the still, small voice. When you made a mistake and your first response was, I knew it. Um, we made a bad choice, and you said, you know what, I should have trusted. Oh, here it is, here it is. When something goes down, you say, I knew it. I knew she wouldn't. Something told me. <laughs> Beloved, when you are praying and searching and fasting and in your word, that something told me, that ain't instinct, that's not intuition, that's prayerful discernment of a God who says that I love you too much not to aggravate you. You know what God can be like? I know this ain't going to be popular. God, God can be like a Jehovah Witness on Saturday morning. You know they, they, they come and they're ringing your bell, standing on your porch and you hiding. Don't move, don't move, don't let them know we home. And they just keep ringing the bell and keep ringing the bell. Then they come back next Saturday, keep ringing the bell, keep ringing the bell. Then they come back next Saturday, keep ringing the bell, keep ringing the bell. They come back next Saturday, keep ringing the bell, keep ringing the bell. That's what God will do when God wants to direct you into God's will. God will keep coming and ringing your bell and ringing your bell. You can ignore it. You can hide from it. But at some point, God's going to win because God knows how to aggravate you. We knew we weren't supposed to go that way because of closed doors. And we knew we weren't supposed to go into Bithynia because the spirit kept aggravating us. We knew it. We felt it inside. So, so we wound up in Macedonia. Now here's the question you ought to ask. How did y'all decide on Macedonia? You wanted Asia Minor, but there were closed doors. You wanted Bithynia, but the Holy Spirit kept aggravating you. So how'd you wind up in Macedonia? Watch the text. I'm going to move quick. It says, why did Macedonia? Because one night, Paul had a dream. And it was a man in Macedonia and said, hey, come over here and help us. He says, so because of Paul's dream, we discern God was pointing us in Macedonia. Because not only does God direct through closed doors, not only does God direct by not letting you go, God will direct through dreams. God speaks in dreams. All you need to do is read your Bible. 
Look at all the times God spoke to someone through a dream. When Joseph hears the Lord say, you're going to be greater than your brothers, it was in a dream. When King Saul resurrected the dead spirit of Samuel, Samuel asked him, why are you doing this? And Saul said, because God's no longer speaking to me in my dreams. When Pilate is trying to figure out what to do with Jesus, his wife Claudia comes to him and says, hey, I'd leave that alone if I were you. Because I had a dream of what was about to happen. In Acts chapter 2, when, God, when Jesus is speaking to his disciples about the Holy Spirit, he says, when the Holy Spirit will come upon you, your young men and your young women, your, your older men and your older women will dream dreams and see visions. When Joseph is trying to figure out whether he ought to trust Mary and take her as his wife, the Lord told him in a dream, go ahead and marry the girl. Then in a dream, he told Joseph, go to Egypt because Herod is trying to kill the child. Then in a dream, he told him, now y'all come back home because Herod is dead. God speaks through dreams. When Abraham lies about Sarah being his sister and Abimelech takes her as a concubine. God speaks to Abimelech in a dream and says, you better not touch Sarah. She belongs to me. And Abimelech got mad because he knew God was speaking through a dream. Dreams can be God's language. Now, dreams can be tricky. I got to move. Dreams can be tricky, number one, because that's not everybody's language. God doesn't speak to everyone in dreams. I will clearly tell you, never in my life has God spoken to me in a dream. That's not my language. Number two, every dream is not from God. Just because you dreamt it doesn't mean you ought to chase it. Amen. <laughs> and dreams require interpretation. They're filled with symbolisms, and metaphors, and imagery. And in the Bible, we see those who had the gift of interpreting dreams. Daniel and Joseph could interpret dreams. So God can speak through dreams, but dreams can be tricky. So Paul says, I saw a dream, I had a dream. And watch this. The man in Macedonia said, come and help us. The word come used there in the Bible is this word dibaino, and it literally means to invite. So Paul's dream was a dream of an invitation to come do something great for God. It was a dream of an opportunity that had come his way. Because God not only directs us through closed doors, God can direct you by opening new doors. God can direct you with opportunities you didn't see coming. God will direct you with possibilities you didn't even know you qualified for. God will direct you by opening a door you didn't even know was there. God will direct you by creating a table for you to sit at with a reserved seat and you didn't even know your name was on the table. God has a way of opening doors. I had never heard of Alexandria, Virginia or Alpha Street. I'm sorry, I know y'all thought y'all was the thing. I had never <laughs> heard of Alfred Street Baptist Church when God opened this door. And it was an opportunity that I did not see coming. God closed the door on Lilydale and opened the door at Alfred Street. Now, before you think that it's just about you, know this, that the dream Paul had the opportunity was a man saying, come help us. Because the opportunities God opens for you that lets you know God is in it, because it's not just about you, it's about God positioning you to be a blessing to somebody else. 
that if God's hand is on it, somebody else is going to be blessed by it. If God is ushering you there, God is just using you to get to somebody else. If God is creating the privilege, it's because he's got a purpose to use you. to. Ble- I wish I had a Bible reader. That was the problem with Esther. Esther got up in the palace and said, baby girl, you have made it. Look at yourself. Mordecai had to come tap her on the shoulder and say, God didn't put you here just to look cute and pretty. God put you here because his people needed somebody who could intercede on their behalf, somebody who could fight their battles, that wherever God favors you, God positions you to be a blessing to somebody else. If God is opening the door, God is using you to touch somebody else. Can I push it? It's an invitation to do great work, to be a blessing to someone else. But watch this. This this what made me happy. Who is the man that invited Paul in the dream? We don't know. Paul didn't know who he was. Can I tell you how you know God is at work? When God creates opportunity for you, using folk you didn't even know knew who you were. Oh, When the Lord makes somebody call your name and you didn't even know they knew your name. When God uses somebody to open a door for you and there's nothing they gain from it other than opening the door, is there a witness in this house? Has God ever used somebody to bless you and you didn't even know who they were? keep coming back to Alfred Street because it was a place where I didn't discern God's will correctly. And when I turned Alfred Street down, I got a phone call one day from a 703 number that I did not recognize. I wasn't going to answer it, but something inside me (laughs) said, take the call. Y'all, true story, I answered the phone. It was Lee Earl. Now, some of y'all don't know who Lee Earl is. Lee Earl rests with the Lord, but Lee Earl was the pastor of Shiloh two blocks down that way. I ain't know no Lee Earl. And I'm trying to figure out how you get this number. Lee Earl used to drive my father in the Congress of Christian Education in the Baptist Convention. He was a friend of my father. He called my mother, who gave him my phone number, and he called me, and I ain't know no Lee Earl. (laughs) And he tells me he's the pastor of Shiloh Baptist. What that got to do with me? He says, I heard you turned down Alfred Street. I said, yeah, I don't think the Lord was calling me there. This is what Lee Earl said. He said, yes, he is. He said, that is a church you do not want to turn down, young man. You do not want to miss this opportunity. You do not want to miss what God is doing. And I came back and asked Deacon Garrett to allow me to be reconsidered on the strength of God using a man I did not know who had nothing to benefit and to gain to call me and encourage me to do what God had willed for me in my life because God has a way of using folk you did not know. said, God spoke in the dream. God opened up the door. Watch the Bible says, I I got to finish, but I feel it. Um, This this, this is my favorite one right here. Because in verse 10, they said, and then we were convinced that God was calling us to Macedonia. Uh, we, We wanted Asia, but the doors kept closing. We wanted Bithynia, but some inside us said no. Paul had a dream, the door was open, God created an opportunity, and verse 10, and we were convinced that God's will was Macedonia. 
Y'all, let, let, let me make you shout. The word convinced in the original Greek of the New Testament is this word symbibazo. Symbibazo, symbibazo. You know what symbibazo means? It, it literally means to put together, to knit together, to come to a conclusion. Here's the shout. Symbibazo is a legal term of what a judge does after he or she has all the evidence. That after they review all the evidence, they make a conclusion based on the evidence that's in front of them. So watch this. How did they know they were going to Macedonia? Watch this. Because it was the logical conclusion of all the evidence God had given. Um, here's what they did. See if you catch it. They heard something, and then they decided to think about it. Uh, they weighed out the pros and cons. They analyzed the data. They created a marketing plan. They got some legal counsel involved. Uh, they looked at the statistical probabilities. They mapped out the itinerary. They pulled all the evidence together and decided this is where God wants us to go because God can also direct us through rational thought and sound logic. God can speak through intelligence. God can speak through strategic planning. God can direct through statistical analysis. God guides with evidence of the data. God directs with sound financial planning. The Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear. But God has given us a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. And I came by to preach to all you HBCU folk the slogan of the United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. It's a terrible thing to shut your brain off when you deal with God. It's a terrible thing to confuse foolishness with faith. It's a terrible thing to think that you can't pray and plan, that you can't pray and budget, that you can't pray and get legal advice, that you can't pray and get wise counsel. It's a shame to have to turn your brain off to walk with God. Listen, y'all, you wanna know how God talks to me? It's real simple. I lift up the same prayer every time I think I've heard from God. You ready? Here it is. God, make it make sense. Because God knows me. If it don't make sense, I'm not doing it. And every time I pray for God to make it make sense, if it's God's will, God has a way of making sure one plus one equals two. God has a way of mapping out the journey, giving the strategic plan, calling the right people to the vision, putting the right budget in place, giving us the fruit, letting us look at the data. God has a way of making it make sense. Closed doors, something inside me said, Dreams, open doors, logical conclusion. Zena, I thought I was done. Till the Lord showed me one thing, and I'm going to say it about three times because someone in your section ain't going to get it. <laughs> Watch the Bible says, I'm, I'm done now, I promise. I'm, they say Baptist, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> um, Bible says, Paul had a dream. And then we were convinced we had to go to Macedonia. You got it. You got it. She didn't. She, huh? Um, <laughs> Paul had a dream. And then we were convinced we had to go to Macedonia. One time, just, now, this time, act like you got it. Paul <laughs> had a dream. Uh -huh, uh -huh, and we were convinced that we had to go. So what is, what's read in between the lines is that Paul shared his dream 
with we. Because he needed some we to help him understand, am I hearing this right? Maybe he shared it with the we because I need some we to pray with me over this thing. Maybe he shared it with the we because he wanted to hear the we's testimony of how God had done things in their life. Maybe, maybe he shared it with the we because I needed some we to lay hands on me and make certain that my mind was clear. Maybe he shared it with the we because I need some we to give me wise counsel. I need some we to direct me because everybody needs some we. And the we you keep can help or hinder you're discerning God's will. You want to know why you struggle with discerning God's will? You got the wrong we. You got folk that know how to cover your sins and know how to lie on your behalf, who know how to cheat with you. What you need are some we that are holy. What you need are some we that pray. What you need are some we that tell you that ain't God's will. What you need are some we that anoint and hold you accountable to the word and the will of God. Everybody needs some holy we. Maybe, just maybe, that's why God's got you in church today. Because you need some new we. You need some we that know how to pray. You need some we who know how to share with you what the word of God says. You need some we that encourage you when you're about to give up and God's about to do a new thing. You need some we. And so I extend to you an invitation, my sister, my brother, in this moment at the conclusion of this sermon, to come find some new we. That God's directing you, but you can't do it all by yourself. God will reveal it, but your we helps confirm it. So today, my brother, my sister, if you're in this space, wherever you are, if you're watching online, and you feel the call of God, that something inside of you, don't ignore it, that's God speaking. That's God tapping you on your shoulder. That's God saying, there's a way back, my brother. There's a way back, my sister. And maybe, just maybe, God is calling you to this we. It wasn't accidental that yesterday 153 people said yes. They sense and know what we believe, that God is doing something in this space that will help you grow in your walk. It will show you the new opportunities God has that help you discern those closed doors, that help you interpret those dreams, that help you know when God is calling you. Lord, today I speak over my sister, my brother, who may have come to church not knowing why, but just felt the need to be here. They heard that little something on the inside. Now, God, I pray that you'd reveal to them part of your plan and purpose is to give them some new we, to attach them to a family of faith that helps them see and discern the work and the will you have for them. God, we open the doors of the church. We extend our arms of welcome. We pray now that your Holy Spirit will guide and lead. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As our deacons come, I invite you to stand all over this place, if you will. If you're here today and you desire to make this decision, you're ready to say yes to some new weed. Do me a favor, move out from where you are. Make your way to the altar of God and trust that God is calling. In the overflow, make your way upstairs. We will wait here for you. So come. Come now. Oh, he's waiting. Won't you come, my sister? Won't you say yes, my brother? Come to the Lord on today. Join your new we today. Come to Jesus. God bless you, my sister. God bless you for your courage this morning. He's calling. Yes, God is calling.
calling you, my brother. God's calling you, my sister. Come to Jesus. Believe him and receive him. Bless you, sisters. Bless you as you come. And receive him. Come to Jesus now. As they're coming, you know it. He's waiting with arms. him he's calling come on believe him and receive him they're still coming they're still coming would you help me celebrate salvation and fellowship in this place oh believe him believe him and receive him he's calling they're still coming they're still coming Believe him and receive him. Receive him. Receive him. He's calling. Come to Jesus now. You may be seated, beloved. Come to Jesus now. Lord, we thank you that this morning you've ordered the steps of your daughters and your sons to come to this place to receive the salvation that only comes in Jesus Christ and the fellowship of this church family. God, we welcome them as we become their new we to help them discern the will of God in their lives. God, today your will is being made manifest as they say yes, and we pray that we'll do all within our ability to share with them how amazing your love is and the great things that await them in this family of faith. We receive them now in Jesus' name. And all those who are thankful to God, just put their hands together in thanksgiving for what the Lord has done. As we take this opportunity to minister to them, we also want to speak to those who are online. We'll let you know that this invitation is extended to you as well. All you need to do is go out to our website and you'll find a membership form on alfredstreet.org. It gives us an opportunity to share with you the amazing gift that these have experienced on this day. To my sisters and my brothers, welcome to the Alpha Street Baptist Church family. We are well proud to have you as part of our family. Our deacon's gonna usher you to our ready room where we'll share with you some great things. Trinity's now gonna bless us in songs. We get ready to leave in the grace and the peace of God. Now to the Almighty, the All-Wise, 
the sovereign and eternal, the faithful and omnipotent God who alone is creator of heaven and earth. To the God who's made himself perfectly known to us, and Jesus who always and alone is our Christ, our loving Lord, our sacrificial savior, our resurrected, risen, reigning, returning redeemer. To the God who chooses to dwell in these earthen vessels of clay, through the sustaining power, promise, presence, purpose, and person of the Holy Spirit. To that all wise God be both glory and majesty, dominion and power from now until eternity. And the redeemed of the Lord who loved the Lord and awaited his return said amen. Amen. Go in the grace of God and may the grace of God go with you. What's up, Alpha Street family? Welcome to our online worship experience. I'm Charnel King, social media manager. Let's get into these wonderful weekly announcements. ASBC family, today is the last day of Seek 2024. If you made it this far, give yourself a pat on the back. Make sure to tune in for the last 7 p.m. prayer call with Pastor Wesley this evening. We pray that everyone who participated this year has been blessed and truly changed for the better during this journey. Let's talk about Ash Wednesday. We are ushering in the season of Lent. Ash Wednesday is on February 14th. You can drive by for ashes from 6 to 8 a.m. and 12 to 2 p.m. You can also join us in the sanctuary for the live worship experience at 6 a.m., 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. We hope to see you there. Here at Alpha Street, we celebrate black history year round. During the month of February, it's a time to spotlight achievements of African Americans throughout the country, as well as our own Alpha Street members. We have a plethora of content that we'll be sharing with you. The great thing here at Alpha Street is that you never know who you might be sitting next to. Guess what? We are rolling out Meet the Street, a new digital series where Pastor Wesley interviews hidden gems at Alpha Street who are doing extraordinary things. It all kicks off on February 22nd. For more information, make sure you visit our website. Do you want to be a part of a live studio audience? If so, you're in luck. On Friday, February 23rd at 6 p.m., Alpha Street's Office of Christian Care and Counseling, along with their mental health and the Sacred Sanctuary series, will host a panel with experts to discuss teens and racial stress. We're confident that joining us as a live audience member will be an exciting and fun experience. We can't wait to welcome you and a friend on Friday, February 23rd in the sanctuary and the live recording will commence at 6.30 p.m. Don't forget to go to alphastreet.org to register. Let's stay connected. Make sure you're following along at Alpha Street BC on all social platforms. We are now on TikTok. Now here are the remaining upcoming announcements for this week. Thanks, Charnel, for kicking off the announcements. Welcome to our online worship experience as we continue to celebrate the season of Lent as well as Black History Month. Speaking of Black History Month, during the month of February, Alfred Street Baptist Church will kick off a powerful and phenomenal thought-provoking conversation with the esteemed Dr. Evelyn Brooks Higginbotham, a Victor S. Thomas Professor of History and of African American Studies at Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Professor Higginbotham has been a tenured faculty member at Harvard since 1993, and she chaired the Department of African and African American Studies from 2006 to 2013. We encourage everyone to join us online as we release a brand new four-part lecture series entitled Faith in Black History, Didn't My Lord Deliver Daniel? In this four-part lecture series, Professor Evelyn Brooks Higginbotham will explore the role of religion in the history of the black freedom struggle in America. You don't want to miss this all-important series. Please stay connected to our website, eBlast, and social media platforms upon completion of our 2024 Seek Fast to receive the latest information as to when this all-important lecture series will premiere on the ASBC website. We know that these are difficult and challenging times. We invite you to stay connected by participating in our online worship services and remain faithful in your giving online via our Alfred Street website, ASBC app, and on our text messaging system. Everyone, please be sure to scan the QR code with your phone, which will take you directly to our giving page on our website. 
If you have any questions about giving, please feel free to email our finance department at finance at alfredstreet.org. If you're interested in becoming a member of the historic Alfred Street Baptist Church, please email deacons with an S at alfredstreet.org or complete the membership form on our website or on our ASBC app. Join us as we enter the season of Lent. Beginning with Ash Wednesday on February 14th, there will be an in-person live stream service at 6 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. Eastern, augmented by our drive-by Ashes to Go, which will be available at 6 a.m. and 12 p.m. Eastern time only. Visit our website for more information. Calling all Alfred Street current and newly elected leaders. You're required to attend the in-person training through our annual leadership conference entitled Transformative Love of Jesus Christ on Saturday, February 24th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. noon. Our new date is Saturday, February 24th, so be sure to mark your calendars and register online via the Alfred Street website. Thank you for journeying with us throughout SEEK 2024. We pray you're experiencing the transformation of what happens as we avail ourselves to God. We logged off social media, followed a restricted dietary menu, turned off our television, sacrificed our beloved coffee, and reduced unnecessary spending during our 21 days of fasting and praying. Please be reminded that each year, as SEEK comes to an end, we give financially what we save during the fast to continue with our mission of helping those in need and to inspire others inside and outside of our church family to be servants in the name of Jesus. All are invited to participate in the time of Seek Giving via our website or by scanning the QR code on the screen. Our men's ministry presents Real Talk for the month of February on Wednesday, February 21st from 6.30 p.m. to 8.45 p.m. Eastern Time. This month's topic is Standing on Business, Lessons for a Successful 2024. All men are invited to join us in person for this Standing on Business Men's Real Talk session, discussing strategies to live by in 2024 in the best way possible. Men, are you standing on business? Can you share how you're creating success in 2024? Please join our ASBC Men's Ministry for our 2024 series, Men's Real Talk, Thriving Together, as we embark on our year of collective growth and support for our men. Again, meet us in person on Wednesday, February 21st at 6.30 p.m. Building 331 First Floor Conference Room, located at 331 South Patrick Street in Alexandria, Virginia. Visit our website to register online and or email men at alfredstreet.org for more info. Hey, Alfred Street family and friends, we invite everyone to join us on our HBCU Sunday happening on February 25th. Join us and please be sure to wear your HBCU gear at our 8 a.m. worship service. Join us as we welcome Morris Brown College from Atlanta, Georgia. Morris Brown College was founded in service, grounded in excellence, and anchored in tradition. Our guest keynote speaker will be Dr. Kevin E. James, 19th president of Morris Brown College. Calling all alumni, graduates, students, and faculty of Morris Brown College to join us in person on Sunday, February 25th. All alumni, as well as current students of an HBCU, are invited to join us in person. We ask that you represent your school, Divine Nine Fraternity or Sorority, or organization by wearing your HBCU or Divine Nine gear. We look forward to seeing all of you on Sunday, February 25th. Speaking of February 25th, Alfred Street's Children and Youth Ministry, in conjunction with our Higher Ground teens, present their annual Black History Month play at our 11 a.m. worship experience. This year's title is It's Giving B-H-E, Black History Energy. We invite everyone to please come out and support our ASBC teens on Sunday, February 25th at our 11 a.m. worship experience. Join us live and in person in the sanctuary for a Black History moment you don't want to miss with our talented and amazing Higher Ground teens. Email Ground at alfredstreet.org for details or any questions. Our Office of Christian Care and Counseling would like to share with our ASBC family and friends our February awareness tip regarding teen dating violence. Dating is an action that should include honesty and transparency. Seeking a relationship, whether it be professional, familial, or romantic, should consist of healthy boundaries and respect to be successful. 
Teens and young adults should be educated on healthy and unhealthy intimate partner relationships to avoid negative risks and consequences. Intimate partner violence amongst teens is common and affects millions within the U.S. Intimate partner violence can include physical violence, hurting your partner through physical force. We are all surrounded by teens who we love and care for, who we hope to see turn into adults that are secure, healthy, and responsible. Unfortunately, that's not always the case as intimate partner violence, or IPV, experienced amongst teens is common and often viewed as normal or part of their relationships. Please visit our website or virtual events to receive helpful links and more info on teen dating violence. For additional assistance, please email pastoralcounseling at alfredstreet.org. Pastor Wesley's pick of the month book for February is Righteous Discontent, The Women's Movement in the Black Baptist Church, 1880 to 1920, by author Dr. Evelyn Brooks Higginbotham. Focusing on the National Baptist Convention, the largest religious movement among black Americans, Higginbotham shows us how women were largely responsible for making the church a force for self-help in the black community. In her account, we see how the efforts of women enabled the church to build schools, provide food and clothing to the poor, and offer a host of social welfare services services as we observe the challenges of black women to patriarchal theology. Visit your favorite retailer to purchase this book. On February 11th, 18th, and 25th, our Alfred Street Girl Scout troops will sell cookies before and after our 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship services outside of the church portico. Proceeds will help support activities and experiences that build girls of courage, confidence, and character in grades K through 12. Email Girl Scouts at alfredstreet.org for details. Hey everybody, I'm Minister Otis Bird Jr. and it's my honor to serve as the assistant to the pastor for online ministry and engagement here at the Alfred Street Baptist Church. And guess what? I have some exciting news to share with you. I'm glad you asked. It's our new live pre-worship broadcast, The Prelude. I got you. Every Sunday morning, we will go live reporting from inside the walls of ASBC to inform you of what's going on in these Alfred streets, to intentionally engage with our faithful online viewers, and just to have some fun together before worship service begins. It will begin airing on Sunday, February 4th. Online viewers, get ready to interact with us live in the chat. Get ready to share with us your name, your city, and any other comments you'd like to share with us. We are excited about this endeavor and we hope to see you there. Alfred Street's Missions and Outreach Department is seeking licensed barbers to volunteer monthly at one of our local homeless shelters. The time of your commitment would be from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. for a minimum of one Saturday per month. All barbers must be licensed with their own tools. If interested, please contact missions at alfredstreet.org for details. Are you looking for an incredible opportunity to share your musical talents? If so, look no further. Alfred Street Sanctified Symphony Orchestra is thrilled to announce that they are recruiting talented musicians like you to join their harmonious family. They're calling for all musicians to join them every Friday evening from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Send an email to sanctifiedsymphony at alfredstreet.org if interested. They can't wait to welcome you into the Alfred Street Baptist Church Sanctified Symphony Symphony Orchestra. Hey Alfred Street, Versus is back in stock. Our Versus team has been working around the clock to create another batch of our popular Versus Bible-based trivia card game, and they're now available for purchase. That's right, purchase your set of Versus cards today before we sell out again. Visit our website or ASBC app and be the first to get your hands on Versus, a Bible-based trivia game by Alfred Street Baptist Church. Alfred Street's Office of Christian Care and Counseling in conjunction with the Health and Well-Being Recovery Ministry present a bi-weekly peer support session virtually via Zoom. That's every first and third Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Visit our website for the Zoom link information. The Recovery Ministry peer support sessions will provide a safe and confidential environment to confront addictions, compulsive behaviors, and issues that interfere with a renewed relationship with God. 
Email recovery at alfredtree.org for details. Calling all parents and guardians of children, youth, and teens. Alfred Street's Children and Youth Ministries are back. We're currently accepting registrations for Kid Street, Crossover, and Higher Ground. Visit our website to register your child or youth today. Alfred Street invites everyone to join the Joyce K. Peterson Handbell Ringers. They are thrilled to announce that their ensemble recruitment is now open. If you have a passion for music and a heart for worship, we invite you to be a part of this harmonious journey. If you can read music and are eager to contribute your talents to a musical ministry that touches souls, this is your moment to shine. For more info and to express your interest, please email handbell at alfredstreet.org. Our Phase Savage Gun tutorial ministry has a new home online. Communicate, learn, and stay informed all in one place. Visit our new webpage and check us out today at alfredstreet.org. Email tutorial at alfredstreet.org for details. Our ASBC Village study guide is now available on the website to download. Be sure to check out a copy if you want to go deeper with Pastor Wesley's sermon prepared for you by the Villages of Alfred Street team. The guide is available online at alfredstreet.org. We invite everyone to join us for daily prayer call at 7 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. Join us in prayer and praise Monday through Friday only by dialing 425-436-6277, access code 246-114-pound sign. Again, that's 425-436-6277, access code 246-114-pound sign. Our new prayer line number will accommodate up to 2,000 participants. However, once we reach capacity, we will continue to offer the playback option. Call our playback number anytime after 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time each day, Monday through Friday, and you'll be able to replay the prayer call that you missed. To reach the playback line, please dial 425-436-6278 and enter the access code 246114-pound sign. Please note that this is not a toll-free number and therefore, depending on your phone carrier, rates may apply. Hey, Alfred Street family and friends. Are you visiting us for the very first time? Or perhaps you're new to Alfred Street and you want to stay connected to us or receive the latest Alfred Street updates via text. If so, all visitors text the word visitors with an S to our new direct text number 571-977-4525. That's 571-977-4525. Also, we invite you to tune in to our Faith Forward weekly radio broadcast featuring Pastor Howard John Wesley every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Magic 102.3 FM and 92.7 FM for a powerful sermon that will move you forward in your faith. For more information on these and all the exciting events taking place here at Alfred Street, please log on to alfredstreet.org.